Here's a video recap of the first week of February 2013 from the Gulf Street meeting 2012-2013. The week started on Wednesday, January the 30th. The disappointment on the day came in the fourth race where my best bet of the day, who was Starship Truffles, was scratched from the race. So on the day, I, well, I was third, third, then I was third, way too far back, until finally, in the next last race, in the ninth race, I like number eight, Skylander, on the turf in a non-winners one allowance optional claiming for three-year-olds, and he went off at a nice three to one. I doubled the bet and got back forty dollars, so I nearly broke even after I lost my last bet of the day when I was second in the finale on Fort Morgan. Then on Thursday, January thirty-first, my mom arrived. And my mom proved to be quite the good luck charm. On Thursday, I had an excellent day. It started off when I ran second at even money. But then in the fifth race, we were going five furlongs on the turf. It was a non winners one optional allowance claimer. The first thing that caught my eye about my horse, number seven, Brilliant Katie, was that it reminded me of one of my favorite students, Katie Bonilla from Cypress Bay High School. But then as I looked through the past performances, she appeared to be much the best. And as they turned for home, she drew off. She went off at a nice three to one, and I collected $20 even. In the eighth race, I had quite the dilemma. I had two trainers, both with Gulfstream Park Handicapper 40% Club plays. It was down to number six, Kaleidosound, or number one A, Crown Police. But Crown Police scratched. Didn't matter. I had bet on Kaleidosound anyway. And as they turn for home, the stretch, and they have to come and get Kaleidosound, who's got a five-length lead and is opening up. Kaleidosound all alone here from Rio Hano. And then it's Stormy Mandate to the inside at Port Conway, but Kaleidosound has crushed them. Another Jamie Ness winner for Midwest Thoroughbreds, and amazingly, this horse went off at two to one, paid six sixty, got back over thirty dollars. That was awesome. In the very next race, it was the ninth race, five furlongs on the turf, an optional allowance claimer, non-winners of one for sophomore fillies. I like number 11, Sunrise Kitty. And as I said in my analysis, races don't come much more wide open than this, but the two things that I liked about this filly was that she had won her last on the turf sprinting when breaking from a wide post, and today she was in post 11. She had stalked the pace from the outside post and had drawn off with authority. And one of my favorite angles is when horses make the first start on the turf and they have a jump in their buyer speed figures. I really like to see that. Sunrise Katie went off at a generous, oh so generous, 8 to 1. And as they turn for home. And Fearless Jack, they're into the stretch. It is Sunrise Kitty to my Valentine to the outside. Starship Playgirl right in behind them. And now Fearless Jack is closing on the outside. Farther out comes Happy Voyage. They're coming down to the line. And it's going to be... Sunrise Kitty! Oh yeah, 1820. I got back over $40, made for a winning day. In fact, I benefited over $40 on the day. Thanks a lot, Mom. Good luck charm day number one. On Friday, February the 1st, it was the first race. We were going a one-turn mile, a non-winners of three Lifetime, I like number five, one cool kid, heads up and heads down into the stretch, photo finish. Oh, he won. That was nice. I had 10 to win on the favorite, got back $25. My next race was in the third, six and a half furlong, open claimers, I like number five, sinister tail, dueling through the stretch, one head up, one head down, photo finish again. I won again! Paid $540, got back over $13. In the sixth race was my next selection. Like the Todd Pletcher horse, this was number 11, Harbor in the Tempest. Had debuted with a near field best 62 speed figure. Scores 47% of the time with horses making their second start of the meet. Obviously went off as the favorite. Was even money. I doubled the bet and as they turned for home. And these two are well clear. Harbor and the Tempest on the outside takes the lead. Desirable Lady back to second on the rail. Ellerslie Park is next and then comes Gotcha Choo Choo. It's going to be Harbor and the Tempest and John Velasquez 
Nice. Nice winner. Got that $20 there. My two big bets of the day were in the 7th and the 8th, and they both scratched. That led us to the ninth race where I ran second at 2-1. to one. And then in the 10th race, we were going 6.5 furlongs. Maiden Claimers was another Todd Pletcher horse. Number 9, any chance at a dance. 2-1 to one in the program, and this looked like the kind of horse that probably ought to bet against Pletcher, but I've learned the hard way over the years. It doesn't make any difference. You're either with Pletcher or you're against him. I was in. I doubled the bet as they came through the stretch. Photo finish again. And I won. Third winner in a photo finish today. Not four, three. So for the day, I was four out of six and in the money on both the others. Another big winning day. Thanks again, Mom. That was my good luck charm day number two for my mom. On Saturday, February the 2nd, the kids were here, Julie came down, Brad and Lauren came down, and our puppy Vader, and we had a big day planned. We were going to go to dinner and then out to see Wicked, so I didn't have many selections. I tried to be pretty selective. In the opener at Gulfstream, I was fourth at 3-1 to one with a Pletcher runner. Then in the third, it was the co-feature, the Gulfstream Turf Sprint Stakes. I did not like the favorite, Great Attack, who had run twice in this race for the past two years and finished second. But a lot of fans liked him as the favorite because he had run both the past two years in the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Figured he would win on class, but he was a deep closer. I went with the speed horse on the rail, number one, Varsity under Joe Bravo. And as they hit the far turn... And they're into the stretch. Varsity, the front runner. Something extra. Now angling to the outside. Great attack finishing fast on the far outside. Varsity to catch. Great attack trying to come up with something extra. But Varsity's holding on to the lead. And Varsity goes all the way. And the Gulfstream Park... In the very next race, in the fourth, we were going a one-turn mile. Nine, one or two claimers. And it was the horse who had scratched from my Thursday selections, Crown Police. He just looked much better today for Kirk Z80. I doubled the bet on him, and then I said, nope, I'm going to triple the bet. And he walked with it. Collected over $20 on that one. In the fifth race, another one-turn mile. Non-winners won for three-year-olds. I liked number four, Verrazano. Verrazano had been just dynamic in his debut on New Year's Day. Todd Pletcher sent him out in the Lowndes Company today, and he'd actually been nominated to both the Florida Derby and the Kentucky Derby. I thought he looked tons the best. So did the crowd. He was 1-5, to five, and as they hit the far turn and turned for home... And they're into the stretch, and it's Verrazano. John Velasquez puts him to work. He opens up a four-length lead in mid-stretch, and he's pulling away from Gunderman, and from Eaton Blue, it's all Verrazano running away. He's going to win this one from... Brooklyn to Staten Island. Oh, yeah. This horse, Verrazano, may be my Florida Derby horse. Man, he was ultra impressive. In fact, he really impressed the analysts on HRTV. In the eighth race, I had another Todd Pletcher horse. Dougherty, number two, was sent off as the 7-5 favorite, and he was widening his margin as they hit the wire. He won, and I collected another $24. I ran second in my last two bets at Gulfstream. I was second with 40 tails in the Hutchison, a Pletcher runner, and then I was second at 4-1 to one with another Pletcher runner, Oystenstown, and the turf. My best bet of the day was in New York, in the correction states, where I like Nicole H. On the outside, photo finish loss. She'd never been beaten on the inner track. Figured it would be today. I also had two selections at the fairgrounds. I like Bind. He'd been dynamic as a sophomore. Been off for almost a year. Came back and won his non-winners one about a month ago. Today he was non-winners two company. Looked closer than it was. He was one to five. He was a winner with the triple investment. And then in the co-feature at the fairgrounds, it was the Tiffany Last Stakes. And this was the star of the show, was Believe You Can, who had won the Kentucky Oaks last year when we were at Churchill Downs in Louisville. Believe You Can, I tripled the bet on her, and as they came out of the far turn, all Believe You Can. She was my sixth, sixth winner on the day out of ten. In three seconds, nine out of ten in the exacta. That was awesome. My mom, good luck charm, again. 
So as we headed into Sunday, February the 3rd, I wondered if my mom's good luck charm would continue. I had one bed and one bed only where I had added money, and that was in the opener where I tripled the bet on Starship Titan. Went off at 2-1 to one under Kirk Z80, a 40% club angle. Second. Oh, that hurt. So I figured there's no way I could make money. In the second race, it was another Kirk Z80 horse, another 40% club bet. I only went with a $5 bet. And even as I wrote the bet down on Saturday morning, I thought, you know what's going to happen. I'll lose the big bet and win the second one. Sure enough, Southern Dunn won. So even though I was 50% on my first two bets, I was still behind in the betting. We came to the fourth. I ran fourth at 7-1. to one. And then in the fifth race, I like number three playing a joke. And as you've watched these videos, you notice how the little chicklets are underneath the horses. So you can see who's in first, second, third, and fourth with their odds. Well, as I watched this race on HRTV, the chicklets weren't there, and I had no idea at what odds playing the joke was. But as they came out of the turn, he moved to the they lead. Come to the top of the stretch. And now it is playing a joke who's taking the lead. Playing a joke by two. Tuvius Force take advantage. Maddie's trail gives way. Divine Child's on the far outside. But playing a joke is well clear. Playing a joke with a five length lead. And playing a joke in Elvis Trujillo. Run away to victory. Oh, much the best. And then his odds, a juicy six to one. Oh yeah, I collected nearly $40 on that. I'm guaranteed to be a winner no matter what. I was second at 6-1 to one in the 8th, and then in the 10th race, I was a dismal 8th as the 2-1 to one favorite. And then I had one selection left. It was on, on the national scene. It was the Grade 2 San Antonio Stakes from Santa Anita Park. The heavy favorite figured to be Game On Dude. Only four horses running today, and he looked to be the speed of the speed. And I was a little concerned when they interviewed Bob Baffert in the paddock, and he said, well, in a race like this, you never know what the pace scenario is. So I told Mike Smith that we don't have to be on the lead if there's a long shot that wants it. Well, as they turned into the back stretch, a speed duel did develop. They run past the three-quarter pole, and it is game on dude along the inside, and Baz Marty now. These two hooked up, and they're quickening onto the back stretch. They're getting a fast pace now. Game on dude and Baz Marty open up to lead by six. And as they started to come out of the far turn, here came the closers. Did he have anything left? Coming to the quarter pole, and Game On Dude now shakes loose up front. Game On Dude gets rid of Bass Marty. Clubhouse Ride is running at Game One. Make music for me, not in contention. Coming to the top of the lane now. Game On Dude still the leader. Clubhouse Ride running his heart out on the outside. Tries to run up alongside, but Mike Smith still very confident on Game On Dude. He's just shaking the reins at him now. Clubhouse Ride ran a big one, but just is not in the same class as Game On Dude. And that game on dude, cantering on to an easy win. Game on dude and Mike Smith take the San Antonio cutout. Oh yeah, game on dude. 50 to win, 50. He is my third winner, three for seven on the day. Made another profit on the day. That's four days in a row. My mom, the good luck charm. It's the best four days of the winter so far. So for the week, I had 34 selections, 17 wins, that's 50, 50%, and I had a profit of nearly $100 on the week. I told my mom, we need to call the moving company and get her to move down here permanently. We'll be out on track either Wednesday or Thursday, and then Saturday, we'll be out there for Grade 1 Don Handicap Day.